Welcome to another edition of Daily Airline News, focusing on the loss of Air India Flight 171. I am Geoffrey Thomas, and I'm delighted to say joined by my co-host Richard Godfrey in Frankfurt. Good morning to you, Richard. And good afternoon to you, Geoffrey. Thank you. Uh, viewers, this episode is VTANB, the numbers. Episode 242. We have reported on the Air India Boeing 787 fleet maintenance of their 27, now 26 aircraft. In each case, we've looked at the flight records and maintenance records of the last year. We found many issues that appear to indicate a backlog of deferred maintenance issues. We compared Air India with other airlines with a similar fleet size and a similar age, Anna, JAL, Qatar and American. All the other airlines came out far better. We compared AIESL with other MRO suppliers like Lufthansa Technique and found whilst AEISL is 50% less expensive, Lufthansa had five times the productivity per employee and eight times the revenue per employee. We have now decided to take a deep dive into Air India maintenance over the last three years. This is the first episode. We are taking a look at the crash aircraft VTANB. Richard, can you tell the viewers what we have discovered? Yeah. Well, going back over three years, VTAMB operated 1,874 flights before the fatal crash on the 12th of June. Almost 12,000 flight hours and an average utilization of 49.7%. 625 flights from Delhi and 191 from Mumbai. And destinations were 269 flights to the UK, London and Birmingham, 199 to other cities in Europe like Frankfurt and Paris, 174 flights to Dubai, and 44 flights to Melbourne and Sydney in Australia. Out of the 1,874 flights, how many had no problems, no delays, no cancellations, and no diversions? Well, 41%, uh, 771 flights were on time, and I defined on time as a takeoff within 30 minutes of the scheduled departure time. Some even took off before the scheduled departure time, which I find interesting. But once everyone's checked in and I'm boarded, I suppose uh, that's uh, good news. 44 flights were cancelled. That's 3% of the total. And four were diverted once to Abu Dhabi for corrective maintenance issue on a flight coming in from Europe. And three were diverted to Jaipur instead of Delhi because of weather. Uh, twice there was uh, thick fog in Delhi causing diversion and another time there were monsoon rains. Mm. So 1,050 flights, 56%, were delayed between 30 minutes and 21 hours, 15 minutes. That's, a, that's not a very good on-time record at all. Um, no. So what caused all the delays and the cancellations? Well, there were 403 unplanned maintenance issues. On average, every three days or every five flights or every 34 hours of uh, flying time. What about the planned maintenance then? Yeah, that was interesting. There were 13 planned line maintenance sessions. The preliminary report only tells us about one and it states the last major line maintenance check, as per the aircraft maintenance program, was L1-1 and L1-2 checks carried out at 38,504 uh, hours 
flying and 7,255 cycles. And the next major check, a D check, was due on the aircraft in December 2025. Mm. And on average, every 80 days, 150 flights or almost 1,000 flying hours, there was a line maintenance. So much more than the preliminary report uh, tells us about. And since what uh, was termed the last major line maintenance, there had been regular line maintenance. And before uh, that last major line maintenance, in 2025, uh, they started a regime of doing maintenance more often. And the average from 80 days came down to every 60 days. The uh, average 150 flights came down to every 115 uh, flights and the average 1,000 hours came down to every 700 hours. Now, line checks are supposed to be latest every 90 days, 180 flights or 1,000 hours, whichever comes uh, earliest. And they usually last uh, 12 hours to 24 hours for a, ch a line check. And the average in Air India's case was three days and six hours, which uh, is a lot longer. The next problem was the number of unplanned maintenance in between each planned maintenance. So it was, they do a line check, it would come back twice for a corrective maintenance before the next line check. But that went up to four times uh, in between each line check. It would, uh, aircraft would come back in for corrective or unplanned uh, maintenance. So for every planned maintenance, it was followed by four unplanned sessions. And when there is repeat maintenance, even just a couple of days after a planned maintenance, it is obvious that some issue was not fixed in the line maintenance. Or even worse, maintenance introduced a new problem that wasn't there before. And there were 50 unplanned maintenance sessions lasting longer than 24 hours. That's amazing. So, Richard, the base checks are every three years, 2,160 flights or 12,000 hours. Were more extensive checks performed? Was there a base check in the last three years? Yeah. Now, this is where it really gets uh, interesting. Uh, VTANAMB, going back in history, it was delivered on the 26th of January 2014. So the nine-year check, uh, every three years, the nine-year check was due on the 26th of January 2023, plus or minus a month. And the maximum grace period given is three months, and that has to be granted uh, under special circumstances. Now, there was a heavy maintenance visit, an HMV, to Mumbai between the 26th of June and the 30th of July, 2023. It lasted 33 days. And I assume this was the nine-year base check or a C check, but it was six months late and this is not allowed. But it gets worse. The HMV had to be followed up by 19 further sessions of maintenance between 1st of August 2023 and the 14th of October 2023, and a total of 19 days of further work. In the six months before the HMV in Mumbai, there was a total of seven corrective maintenance sessions. In the two and a half months after the HMV in Mumbai, there were a total of 41 corrective maintenance sessions, and those resulted in 17 flight cancellations and 28 flight delays. It appears that the HMV did not solve all the issues, 
And in fact, it created a whole set of new issues. Mm. So after 33 days of heavy maintenance, an additional 19 days of maintenance was required. What do you think went wrong? Well, after the 33-day session, VTA-MB flew to Frankfurt and back on the very next day, the 30th of July. And it had maintenance in Frankfurt. And then it flew back to Delhi and had maintenance in Delhi. And then it, the next day, it flew to Amsterdam and back. The same thing happened. And the next day, 1st of August, it flew to Dubai and back. And so it went on. After each flight, it was back in maintenance, a total of 36 hours of additional maintenance in these three days. But it didn't stop. It following In the following 75 days, VTAMB was back in maintenance 41 times for a total of 810 hours of work. And this carried on until the 11th of June, 2025, the day before the crash. The crash occurred two years later. How many maintenance sessions occurred in this two years? Well, there were a total of 319 maintenance sessions, uh, longer than six hours, with an astounding total of 198 days or 4,768 hours of maintenance in those 682 days. 143 maintenance sessions were longer than 12 hours, 46 maintenance sessions longer than 24 hours. And we have published a link in the description below with a spreadsheet that gives all the details of VTAMB, all the flight records, all these maintenance uh, sessions. So if you want to take a deep dive yourself, then you can uh, download that Excel spreadsheet. So please, um, now you've mentioned the spreadsheet, uh, please tell the viewers where we get the data from. Yes, well, we are business subscribers to Flight Radar 24. That allows us to download three years of data on any commercial aircraft and to people like airlines and uh, maintenance uh, outfits and uh, use that data for their analysis. Even insurance companies use that data for uh, checking on claims people make about a delayed flight or a cancelled flight. We have included also a link to the data model behind that Excel spreadsheet. And that shows the basic flight data items that we uh, download and the derived flight data items we calculate from that data and the utilization data and the maintenance data that we uh, derive, a total of uh, 26 uh, data items. So I've included a link to that uh, data model in the description below. Okay, so we've looked at that. But what about the utilization of uh, VTANB? Well, the aircraft was being pushed as hard as it goes. The overall utilization over the three years was 49.7%. But there was a wide range during that three years. And after the, main, uh, the heavy maintenance visit, when uh, VTAMB was not in further corrective maintenance, it was being pushed at an average of 59.2% utilization. That's about as hard as it uh, gets in the airline business. So, what is your summary? of the VTANB numbers? Well, the planned maintenance was being done regularly, but it was taking much longer than usual. And corrective maintenance was becoming more and more frequent and actually dwarfed the planned maintenance in the number of hours spent fixing the aircraft. The utilization was high and Air India had started in January of this year to increase the frequency of the planned maintenance 
Obviously, they were trying to catch up with any deferred maintenance. But the unplanned maintenance just took the dominant role and catch up on the deferred maintenance was not possible. In the case of the crash aircraft, VTAMB, the situation appears to have finally caught up with Air India. Mm. Yeah, some uh, extraordinary numbers there. And uh, yeah, it's a very, very uh, challenging situation. It is indeed. And I think it tells an interesting story when you dig a little bit behind the numbers and mm. try to work out what was going on. Mm. Well, Richard, thank you very much indeed for that uh, extraordinary analysis. Um, I'm sure the viewers are going to be uh, really quite stunned by it, and I'm sure there'll be many, many questions, and um, we'll be back tomorrow, will we not, to uh, start fielding those questions. Indeed. Uh, we'll have a questions uh, session tomorrow uh, on on this and other uh, India-related uh, issues. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we'll be planning to look at other aircraft. Uh, we've talked about um, diversions and RAT deployments on ANO and ANC. Um, so we'll take a look at uh, other aircraft in the fleet and see how they compare to VT A and B. Yeah. Once again, Richard, thank you for your work. Really appreciate it very much indeed. You're very welcome. And viewers, thank you for tuning in. Please subscribe to us. Please like us. Please keep those wonderful comments coming. Please keep those great questions coming. And if you like our channel, please share it with uh, your friends and colleagues. Um, that would be terrific. And we look forward to your company tomorrow. Thank you very much.